my back, boy. Please don't think it's sweet, I stay with the heat, even though I'm a sad boy. You better watch the way you breathe around me for the breath of your last boy. We begin this part not with Sasuke or anyone from Team 7, but with Asuma as he exits the home of Kuranai who follows him out. I told you it's better if you just take a break for a while, said Kuranai. Don't worry about it. I got the best team. They'll keep me safe. A day had passed since Sasuke left on his mission and the Akatsuki were on the move already acquiring a new Jinjiriki due to the likes of Hidan, Kakuzu, Tobi, and Deidara as they have hurried their plans. And this informs the need for Tsunade to gather many shinobi who listened to what had happened at the fire temple from one of its last survivors. Lord Chikuru faced him and got killed, said the monk. Seriously, Tarasuma? I can't believe it. As such, I need you to disperse and look for them, said Tsunade. Be careful. They're quite powerful. It took multiple tuning to beat one before, well, that and Naruto one-shotting one of them. Of course he did. That kid just keeps getting stronger and stronger every day. Anyways, dismiss says Sonate. As in the flash, they all jump away with Ino, Chika Show splitting up for now. And as such, Asuma, Shikamaru, Izumo, and Kotetsu will stick together and move out to search. Moving about through the trees, they soon arrive at the temple, finding many having already been buried and complete solace leave with them going back to looking around for their enemies. That's when Shikamaru asks, when they're jumping about the trees, what was your relationship with this Chikaru guy? Mm, why are you asking? It's been a while and you haven't lit one cigarette. Good observation. I guess in a way, he and me were like you and Choji. We were part of the Guardian Toll together. You served at the fire temple? I'm sorry. You're not old enough to be sad, Shikamaru. Just make sure to keep your comrades safe. If it's worth anything, you'll just go back to it like nothing happened anyway, said Shikamaru. I didn't quit because of Shikaru's death, you know. Shikamaru was surprised and is now interested in why he actually quit. And the fact that he quit. But now they need to stay focused on the mission. With enough tracking, they eventually find Hidan at the moratorium, well at a moratorium, in the middle of nowhere. Asuma body flickers behind the Akatsuki who was sitting at the steps and throws two kunai as Hidan reacts standing and using his scythe to knock them away before spinning and throwing it at Asuma who dodges, leaving him open to two attacks from the side as he is then pierced by two giant blades from Kotetsu and Izumo. Damn, leave Shinobi, you got the nine tails with you at least. Looking down, he sees a trail of shadows keeping him immobile and notices Shikamaru atop the roof before him. As Shikamaru would say, we don't need him to take you out, but I guess you really are bizarre, huh? Kotetsu and Izumo find that he's not even flinching from these attacks, and Asuma takes out his chakra blades. So where's your partner? As he don't smirks from behind Shikamaru, the shinobi bursts out, throwing a punch and alerting everyone. But Shikamaru returns and changes his hand signs. You made the wrong move. As soon as he says this, Kakuzu's fist is caught as he turns seeing a mound of shadow that then turns into a clone of Shikamaru. This is an Anara clan technique, said Kakuzu. I made it thanks to a certain loud mouth guy. Asuma attacks Hidan, who is still frozen, as this is how good Shikamaru just is now, and this is how good he's become. He proceeds to flip over the shinobi, landing as he rolls to the floor. Asuma then uh, tells the other two to retreat as Shikamaru releases his control, when Kakuzu then breaks away from his clone, striking it, only to find his arm stuck in its torso as he latches onto him and completely envelops him in darkness before covering the rest of his body. Shikamaru jumps back, weaving a few signs. Shadow style. Shadow cocoon. The mass of darkness crushes the member as Shikamaru lands, but finds that even with that, and the fact that he thought that he took care of Hidan with this strategy, his body was still swinging aimlessly, even though his head was not attached, and his head itself spoke from afar in rage. Who the hell is this? What the hell is he? Sekotetsu. Just then, an explosion of wind stretched through the shadow cocoon, and Kakuzu closes in, coming at Shikamaru and striking him across the face. Not even worth using a jutsu against. But I will say, you caught up my circulation for a while. You're not bad. Shikamaru slams to the floor as Kakuzu proceeds to stomp, but the ninja would roll, weaving some hand signs. Shadow style. From his shadow, Shikamaru gathers and releases a wave of organic shadows that wash past Kakuzu and everyone, and Asuma remarks, I don't feel anything. Is this what he learned from Naruto? 
Chimera Shadow Garden. Upon finishing the limit of Jujutsu, Kakuzu finds himself surrounded by these massive shadow creatures, a wolf, a frog, a snake, and an ox. These creatures then attack and crush him as he turns to water and then appears above everyone, breathing in. You're really getting on my nerves. He throws out a massive water dragon that crashes into the creatures, turning them to mush, and yet the floor of shadow absorbs the Jutsu, making it seem like nothing happened. This shocks Kakuzu, who has a chakra blade then thrown at him, slicing a bit of his neck. You're underestimating my student, said Asuma. He's already analyzed you. Chimera Shadow Garden, thought Shikamaru. By creating a field of shadows, I lose the ability to trap my enemies, and in exchange, I create any creatures to fight for me, and all Jutsus and natures are reduced to nothing. My creatures can also be remade. The downside is... Hidan then screams for Kakuzu to fix him up, cutting off this little exposition, as by this point he was being held down by some shadow frogs and could no longer even use his scythe because he was taken away and he was now completely helpless. But now everyone can focus their attention on Kakuzu, who was now pissed and explodes with these tendrils, swinging them down and ripping apart his cloak. Time is money, and you're wasting mine, kid. Getting in front of Shikamaru, Kotetsu and Izumo do a combination jutsu, releasing a wind wall that counters and holds the tendrils at bay, and Kakuzu lands down, retracting them, and creating and expanding a massive tornado, as Shikamaru then screams with the jutsu being able to then absorb it. <sighs> I was right, taking those jutsus take a toll on you. As the wind clears, Shikamaru is then seen drenched in sweat already, and grits his teeth, smiling. Yeah, you're right, but it doesn't matter. Closing in at this point, Asuma engages the monster in hand to hand, slicing these tendrils over and over until he uses a scroll, poofing out a brand new blade, a dagger he swings up, cleaving him in two. I'm not the only one who leveled up, thought Shikamaru. Yes, Naruto made the blade that Asuma just used, but not with craftsmanship, but with earth, fire, and water release. He crafted a blade that was very attuned to chakra. However, from his body, Kakuzu's body, then explodes more of these tendrils as Asuma backs up while sawing through them like butter until he skids back, looking up, and he sees three massive dolls towering over him and everyone. I'm gonna kill you and collect the bounty, said Kakuzu. It seems you were worth killing. You wish. As he hears this, from above, a giant fist drops as one of the puppets then opens its mouth, releasing a blast of flames, meeting with Choji's massive fist. Hope we aren't too late, said Choji. Ino jumps off of Choji, she was hiding a little bit, as Choji pushes off landing before his team, and just like that, Ino Shika show reunited with Shikamaru seeing limitless possibilities for strategies now. Let's trounce him. We now cut to Sasuke as he walks into a barren land covered with a cloak and a straw hat, well, he has a straw hat, and he looks up with these three Tomori Sharingan. Yep, I can feel Rochimaru's presence. Quickly, by using his ability to see Chakra, he makes a secret entrance into the underground hideout, not even tiptoeing but confidently strutting about in a long hallway until he reaches a door. Going through that door, on the other end we see Orochimaru who was talking with Kabuto then turn serious as this door slowly creaked open. It's a feeling that overcomes him, it's not even about the presence of Sasuke, more of the intent. Right as he feels this, his head is then cut off his body and his body is punctured. The same goes for Kabuto as an explosion occurs, leveling the entire hideout. And from the hideout, an explosion of snakes follow after Sasuke as he rises into the sky, slicing and dicing through in each one of them until he begins to fall, doing one-handed signs, turning to lightning itself and dispersing. Orochimaru from the dust is then seen as those pieces of lightning fly and go crash into him, but he regurgitates another body and his old one is struck and pulverized and fried to nothing. The new body of Orochimaru lands just outside the crater and reaches into his esophagus, pulling out the blade of Kusanagi as he overlooks the area looking for Sasuke. I knew it was only a matter of time, but it's too soon. I see you copied my old trick, eh? Quite the bloodlust you got there. Yes, them seeing themselves getting punctured, like feeling that, that was just Sasuke's bloodlust. He leveled up a lot. But just then from behind, he is stabbed and turns to strike at Sasuke, who dodges and kicks him, pulling out his own blade and throwing a shuriken at Orochimaru, who barely catches himself, skidding back, healing his injuries, and parrying the shuriken. Sasuke then lands right as he flashes forward towards Orochimaru, covering his feet with lightning, and Orochimaru doesn't have time to react, and has his body slashed open, and then has a seal stamped on him. I've been waiting for a rematch, you old snake. 
Orochimaru and him then begin to weave hand signs as they each prepare their own jutsus, of course, but Sasuke's seal begins to spread on the snake as Orochimaru then fires after finishing his own jutsu an explosion of massive amounts of smoke. At this point, Kabuto gets to higher ground as well, using a pillar to climb, and he looks over, seeing Orochimaru taking a giant form of himself, his snake self. This being a massive white snake, far too big for Sasuke to of course seal as that is what he was going for in the first place, it wasn't really a lightning attack. And he says, whatever, I'll just kill you anyway. I'd like to see you try Sasuke, you're a Naruto Uzumaki, what good can you do? As he smirks, we zoom away into the forest, the one that Sasuke came from to this barren land, seeing a seal stamped at this one tree this entire time that had been gathering sage energy. That same ceiling is then shown on Sasuke as he rips off his shirt and partially begins to transform, leaving Orochimaru at a loss of words. How did you become a true sage before me? How? Now a scaly appearance with two horns, Sasuke's eyes turn slit and resemble that of a snake as he says, even Naruto would be surprised by this one. If it becomes a toe sage, it only makes sense that I become a dragon, don't you think? In these two years, without the help of Naruto, Sasuke found the cave of Rurichi, pass, uh, passing the test of the leader of the snakes, and being given the body of a sage. Ever since that, he's been constantly working, and he truly does not want to be left behind by Naruto. He could do that, but he's a battle junkie, and he wants to get payback for himself, or he would never forgive himself, and that's just his philosophy. As a massive smoke bomb occurs, Sasuke summons the leader of the Cave of Snakes herself as she hisses and looks down upon the failed sage. Orochimaru, so this is what has become of you, said the snake sage. Thanks for this, sorry to bother you, said Sasuke. Boy, I just made this interesting and nearly ate you out of spite. Oh, trust me, it'll be fun. Cutting back to Team Asuma, we find Kakuzu laid out dead as the shadows of Shikamaru retract, with him falling to one knee as Trudis tries to support him. We need to get some food into you, and me. Having burnt a lot of chakra, Choji lost a few pounds, and Eno asked, Are you- Are you- Are you sure that all of them are this strong? I'm tired. Considering Orochimaru used to be an Akatsuki member, said Izuma, I expect the worst. <sighs> Kurona is pregnant. Freezing in place, everyone turns to look at their sensei. For real? For real. Sensei, that's amazing, you know, said, congratulations. She hugs him as Choji does the same, and Shikamaru is bewildered, smiling. Yeah, you better not pick up smoking again. Don't plan on it. As for Orochimaru, well, life isn't fair. As a snake himself, he faces the snake Sage, and, well, that's not really a good combination when, you know, a snake has Sage in their name. You get the point. He creates another body, a humanoid one, for he and Sasuke to face off in battle of intelligence while the gigantic kaiju do their own thing. Their battle had taken them to the forest as they would run using trees to blur the vision of each other until Orochimaru is seen having already finished a sign. As he stops from below Sasuke, snakes explode clenching onto his body and leaking an acidic poison. However, unaffected, Sasuke activates a jutsu of his own he had laid out as from behind Orochimaru is then grabbed by fangs of a rising snake that was disguised as a tree. This binds and keeps Orochimaru from using any jutsu as he begins to then absorb the chakra of the snake instead because obviously he can't move any hand signs. Why isn't it? The snake then jabs its fangs even deeper, not even getting weak but retaliating instead. A human dares to try and take my chakra. Throwing him aside, Sasuke runs at blinding speed given to him by his Senjutsu and releases a blast of flames. That snake that is literally clenching Orochimaru is just a downsized version used by Transformation Jutsu to, you know, trick Orochimaru into thinking that it was just like some transformation type one, like a basic snake. It's actually a summoned creature from the Cave of Ruichi. So, as Orochimaru turns to absorb this, however, the attack is forcefully dispersed and he says, What? Sasuke then leaps at him and strikes his heart pinpoint just as a snake form meanwhile is slowly petrified by the acid of the grey snake sage. You bit off more than you could chew. The Juru Orochimaru can only freeze while his artificial clone melts asking Sasuke, where do you think I went wrong? You started experimenting on kids. You lived a life full of hedonistic desires for the same reason you're facing your end. I might not be Naruto, but who I am is Sasuke Uchiha and I'm the one who beat you. 
Walking past his corpse, it melts to nothing as the great snake sage shatters the statue, ending Orochimaru's life as she looks down to see Sasuke as he begins to exit sage mode. Are you and this little grudge done now? It's not a grudge, it's about pride. Naruto's my rival. Now caught up. Cringe. Sh shut up! Back at Konoha, meanwhile, Team Asuma had returned quite tired as Asuma would give his report and he actually had to tell something to Tsunade he's been meaning to for a while now. Congratulations, said the Kage. Ah, I guess we're, we're gonna be missing you. Yeah, I actually like to leave now. I found my replacement in Shikamaru. I'm sorry to say. Shizune is so happy to hear this, but Tsunade says that he doesn't need to feel bad. There will be procedures, of course, but go home and celebrate even. Back in the village, Naruto and Hinata, meanwhile, are walking about. And like mentioned, they don't make their relationship obvious. They've lived long enough to know each other and they show care in different ways. Right now, they're just hanging out, looking at stands, buying things. And this also gave Naruto a chance to interact with the villagers who were low-key trying to be his wingmen and women. Ah, I think that's so sweet. Try saying that after he sneaks attacks you for the fourth time of the day, said Naruto. Yeah, but Konohamaru relies on you, like his real family. Maybe I should find a way to ditch him. Naruto! Kidding. Wait. As a byproduct of having sound release, Naruto now picks up certain frequencies much more easier than people, much like how Kiba can. He actually took inspiration from him. And he also can detect changes in chakra in the air. And right now, he felt something very dangerous as he then runs off, yelling, Everyone run right now! Quickly taking his words to heart, they begin to do so as Hinata then runs and jumps on the roof, much like Naruto. What is it? I don't know yet, but there are six people here. Who? Damn it. Give me a hand. As she nods, Naruto activates the Eden Jutsu. This Jutsu now is also able to connect in the spiritual side of Chakra much more. And it can also be connected in advance so you can set it up and then do it at any time you want later. Because Hinata is Naruto's girlfriend, it's a given their spiritual energy is very linked and connected already. And like I said, you can just set it up in advance. They've been hanging out on a lot. It's much easier to activate it that way. If, for example, Naruto tried to do it with like pain, he can't stand him, that he's an enemy right now. So it wouldn't work at all. It's basically just straight up ninshu. If you don't have that connection, it doesn't work. Anyway, Shinobi catch a glance of people running away. And when they ask, the villagers say Naruto said to run, and Kagashi would make his way to the borders of the village like many other shinobi, while others take pe people to the um, the shelter. Exiting her office through the window, Sonate lands on top of the roof, beginning to feel the built-up chakra that's about to be exploded at them. And at the same cliff, we saw all the six paths of pain in unison, you know, in the anime, they're there right now, striking hand signs, just as Naruto and Hinata land atop the Konoha gates telling the current guards to go, and they do so. As he begins to weave signs, Hinata bites her finger and inscribes a seal on her arm as she activates the Byakugan. Today, you, Naruto Uzumaki, will be ours. Shinra Tensei. Go, shouts Hinata, as she then leaps towards palm striking and facing a wave of gravity head on, which we begin to see the inner workings of through the eyes of the Hyuga. If I'm sharing Naruto's chakra, I can definitely do it. That first strike she just threw at them counters the force and also allows Naruto to make contact vice versa because him and Hinata are connected so he can put a massive seal on it which is inscribed in golden color as Naruto then takes charge of holding it. While he holds it, we find that Neji will take the higher ground and find Hinata executing their clan technique unraveling every single point in the jutsu which begins to send out a pulse. Her unyielding spirit is felt by every member of the Konoha village who watch waiting to jump in and Hinata lands the final strike eventually, leaving the six pass shocked. 64 trigrams. Need a work. As Naruto slams his hands together, this attack is blown back at the six, erasing an entire part of the forest, releasing a massive shockwave as Nade says to attack. The voices of the shinobi rise as they run, flashing forward and this means everyone because they're not giving any space to them. However, on the east side of the village, a massive Ninken shows and is summoned, appearing and stomping homes and forcing everyone to quickly go back over there. However, there's no worry. Open. With these words, Lee would uh, need this creature in the snout, crashing its face to the floor as he is shown smiling. I'll take care of this. Naruto lands, helping Hinata up as she had surpassed her limits quite a bit, and he runs back inside the village. They use substitution. 
The Nara clan hearing this puts their jutsu to action, identifying the locations of these men and having quickly uh, people just go and attack them. Naruto lands on a rooftop running and running and beginning to spread his voice via sound release. They aim to reach me out but they missed. That one jutsu ruined their unity. Don't let this chance go. This motivates them a lot more but as they move back they do so with actual precaution by having those fit to use the unit jutsu on them. This includes the Nara clan whose type of tribal control has made this jutsu perfect for them. As such, um, my bad, as such, they take base afar atop the roof of the Kage building while being guarded by the Akamichi clan's barrier technique. By connecting their chakra to many people both in mind and spirit because they literally have a mind transfer jutsu, they reduce the need for hand signs to basically zero. We see a path of pain running along the roads being chased when a massive earth dragon rises and is thrown at him with the pain then weaving signs and releasing from its back lasers when from below two shinobi rise grabbing onto him and screaming as they explode. This detonation then grows building upon itself while their true bodies substitute elsewhere and when the smoke clears the pain was left battered with a massive staff of adamantite then falling blowing away its pieces with us panning up to see who is in the top it trying to make sure they don't do anything crazy like have any backup plans in store. Luckily that was all it took and yes Nagato would have been able to handle that easily but he cannot because he's being bombarded by continuous use of extraordinary techniques and strategies devised by Shikaku and Shikamaru. In 30 minutes he had lost 4 pain bodies even including the Ashura path. However, this made his animal path summon more of these massive monsters. Lee and Guy can only do so much and each animal has a specific ability that they're trying to use to damage the village but Lee and Guy themselves cannot do that much because their output might destroy the village more. But this is when Naruto finally makes his move. Moving along the Hokage heads, he stops at the head of his father. Guy sensei, Lee, move! While mid-air, the two would see him and as such enter the fifth gate as they explode with power and kick away, allowing the three-headed dog that was chasing them along with the centipede to head for Naruto who claps his hands together, weaving signs and breathing in and out as he then leaps forward, pulling back both his fists, water style, secret art. Opening up his hands for a palm strike, he would form these two massive ice hands that slam into and freeze the massive creatures with the ensuing pressure crystallizing and turning them to dust while frost blowing into the wind and this gives Lee the chance to literally stomp the animal path's head off as Naruto lands before him. Okay, what's the situation? I was handing Hinata to the medics. Uh, there's only one pain left but it hasn't moved, it's kinda strange said Lee. Naruto takes caution of this but begins to run to the location and Shinobi begin to gather following him as by this point Naruto is leading an army as they would reach the gates of Konoha which had been left dissipated to rubble and trash. They ready themselves to counter attack and all the Hyugas are present already and were waiting for them until the pain then releases it again. Shinra Tensei. This explosion releases which Naruto leaps forward to meet. Secret art. He copies this application of gravity and meets it with the same exact jutsu as the two begin to weave signs as the two forces clash while Naruto tells everyone to jump back. Years of experience in combat and despair live within me Naruto Uzumaki, you will never beat me in a battle of jutsu. As he weaves signs he turns his almighty push into an attracting force while applying the wind nature resulting in a bizarre phenomenon where everyone around Naruto begins to lose their very breath. No, no. As they fall to the floor gasping for breath and trying to retain it, Pain announces Shinra Tensei, Air Kankas. As he weaves hand signs matching Pain's, Naruto adds an extra one and takes out another. You might have years of experience but while you were killing people, I was working myself to the bone, studying, kite. Forcefully releasing the jutsu on everyone, they begin to regain their breath as Naruto holds his arm out beginning to form a Rasengan while weaving one handed signs. Rasengan. As he pulls back, he creates a pulling effect into the Rasengan, kind of like a black hole, taking away the jutsu of pain and he realizes he had lost, just as Naruto with a shout throws the jutsu at pain who upon being hit is sucked into the Rasengan and turns to nothing in an instant until a pulse rings out. The fight was over. You did it. Good job Naruto, thank you. As he regathers his own breath, Naruto says it's not over yet and takes out a scroll from which he takes out a blade he designed himself, not even an actual blade but it was just a hilt but then it releases a whirlwind before taking the form of a wind edge. I'll be back. In a flash he disappears as the shinobi begin to get their bearings back 
and at this point Hiyashi would speak out saying make sure the perimeter is clear of any traps so that we can bring the villagers out and gather some shinobi to back up Naruto though I doubt he'll need it. Moving through the air at this moment Naruto uses his new jutsu to ride the currents created by his gravity kick and genkai. He envelops his body with an aura and as such keeps himself suspended. This aura is naturally melded with wind release chakra so they, he can basically just fly at this point. Eventually, he lands doing so through a massive tree trunk to see Nagato and Konan. Konan gets on guard as Nagato shoots from his uh, machine these chakra rods and moving instantly, Naruto holds his blade at Nagato's chest already as those rods have been ripped to shreds and Konan falls to the floor placed on a pitfall from Naruto's gravity kicking Genkai. I came here to talk. Why did you do this? Why did you do any of this? He deactivates the blade of wind and drops it. As he backs away and takes a seat, even releasing Conan, who finds Naruto for the first time as charted in their info to have actually been mad enough, like for once, to release the chakra of Kurama because his eyes are slit. Because of them, Hinata nearly got hurt, but he wanted to be different from the man before him and retracts his anger, returning his eyes to normal eventually. I want to hear about your pain. So this is the power of Naruto Uzumaki, thought Nagato. A child soon able to earn the title of God Shinobi already. Alright, I'll tell you about my pain. As Naruto listens, he hears Nagato's story about how his village basically was caught up in a war that killed his parents, ruined his life, took his good friends, his dog, if y'all remember that, that was very sad. He was even dry as student, along with Konan and Yahiko. Danzo interfering and ruining their plans and their lives even more, his whole world was literally pain. I know I've told you about my tale, so let me now hear your answer, Naruto Uzumaki. I know you agree, being a Jinjuriki and all. I've thought about destroying this village before, turning it to smithereens, wiping it off the map, reveling in it, and then I met Sasuke. I already had Iruka sensei then I got Jiraiya sensei even me and Lord Third are cool now. Kakashi Sensei, this whole village is my family. But I'm not ready to forgive all their sins yet. And that's okay. But I won't repeat the same cycle of hatred. If I do, more like you would just be born. That's. How can you hold in that much hatred? How can you? Because despite all my curses and my bad days, people hating me, little by little, I began to see blessings. Because I never gave up. I studied and I studied. I pushed and fought. Because I didn't want to lose to anyone. I didn't want to lose anyone. Because it didn't mean my life was meant to be hell. And it shouldn't be like that for anybody. Blessings, huh? Said Conan. Nagato begins to think. And then he makes a choice. As he grabs a hold of his eye. And with the strain, he slowly rips it out with Conan asking him what he's doing while asking him to stop, as does Naruto, until he holds his uh, his eye in his left hand, a renegon. What's that supposed to do? Why did you do that? asked Naruto. Take it. If you're truly willing to bear the pain of the world, then I'd like to see the world through your eyes. I want to see this new world. You're going to create Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto looks at his remaining eye conviction he sees he now must make a decision when Naruto begins to think even while fighting I saw it the way we were moving if you wanted all of us dead you could have easily eradicated us and yet you chose not to because desecrating those homes meant that much to you you're powerful you're resilient so I will put all my hopes onto you fade to black Kakashi, Hinata, and Asuma make their way towards where they sense Naruto and they continue to run until they come across the boy who is also running over and comes to a stop except for Hinata who runs and hugs him being twirled about and taken to the air. You're okay. Of course I am. It's me. You should be resting. As he sets her down, she says she's okay. I always have enough time for you. So is this what you use your time for nowadays, eh? Shut up. You're married, said Naruto. My bad, my bad. Youth this is amazing, isn't it, Kakashi? I think it's fair to say you already know the answer that I'm going to give you. So, yeah. Okay, don't answer me. <laughs> so, the four return to the village. Naruto and Hinata are holding hands. And they find not just the villagers, but Shinobi waiting for them. All the villagers were happy to see him. And 
to see that he's okay and cheer for him. Welcome back, baby boy Naruto. Konohamaru is even in the crowd as they all begin to swarm him, grabbing and throwing him into the air. Whoa, okay, did not agree to this, alright? Kiba then says, shut up and just take the compliment, goddammit. Welcome home, Naruto. You're our hero. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, it's good to be back, yeah. Just then, he feels a familiar presence and looks to see four hooded people coming over, as do others, with Sasuke taking his hood off, as do the other three, to reveal Jugo, Karin, and Suigetsu. Oh, come on, I wanted to make a cool entrance, damn it. Sasuke. With these words, both Naruto and Hinata run to him, but Naruto flying, raging right before him as they share a group hug. Just what the hell did I miss, that Sasuke? Sounds kind of fun. So much, said Hinata, but I'm just glad you're okay. As they break through her, Kakashi remarks that his new friends and Sasuke introduces them. All of them being quite nervous to stand before such an audience, Sugetsu asks, so you're the famous Naruto. Oh, so you've heard of me, it seems. They also heard about all my embarrassing stories concerning you. You didn't. Please, I do worse. You bastard! Yeah, this is how things are supposed to be, Takagashi. Now, in accordance with this great work from everyone, um, the village begins to rebuild, but some will have to live in tents for now, and supplies will have to be shared. Luckily, their friends from the sand did get that ship, and it was made quite a while ago, and they brought some things, and uses the machine to, like, actually start a business, yes, but it's only been a week, and they procured great benefit. But Naruto brought something to the leaf and stored it. It was something very special. Actually, two things. This being Naruto's eyes, not just one in a jar, because in the end, he chose to give both of them to him. And Tsunade saw this in her office a few days later and was just left shocked. The Renegon, both of them, you, you don't mean, don't worry, it'll be fine. It's going to be an extremely hard procedure. That's why I'm trusting you with it, Lord Fifth. God, the one time you decide to be proper. Is it possible to truly do that, Ashizune? No complication of bloodlines will get in the way? I actually analyzed the eye. I used my reversion abilities on it. You changed this time? As he nods, Naruto says this Renegon was once a Sharingan, which shocks them, and within that eye are remnants of the Senju clan, who are closely related to the Uzumaki. This can be more perfect for me. Also, I want to show Naga to a new world. One that would be worth living in. Alright, Jiraiya doesn't know yet. I'll be sure to let him know, but I can begin right away. As Naruto smiles, we then have another time skip. We watch as the Raikage steps to the land of iron with two attendants. They run down through the snow, effortlessly heading for somewhere they had been told to gather for the Kage summit that was taking place. Along with them, many other Kage and, you know, Mifune will still be taking a neutral party. All of them gather. The samurais are guarding the entrance and the area. They take a seat. And he finds Tsunade had arrived along with Naruto and Sasuke at her side. I know I took a leap bringing you here, but you two need to be professional, alright? Especially you, Naruto. What? Come on, Sasuke doesn't get a warning or anything? My dad lectured me all night about this. It was so annoying. Trust me. I'm good. Uh, that's why. You can trust me, Granny Tsunade. I'm gonna give you a massage or something? Stop trying to butter me up. I am rusty, though. As May arrives, she remarks... Ah, I was hoping to arrive first. She takes a seat with Chojiro and Ao instantly taking notice of the attendants present. One is known as the strongest in their village, and one killed Orochimaru recently. They're simply teenagers, said Ao. What has the world come to? Oh, calm down. I think they're cute, said Mei. Cute? Thought Chojiro. Obviously, she has a, a little admirer. Chojiro always had a crush on Mei. You get the point. Soon, slowly but surely, more and more Kage roll in, with Naruto quickly running to Gara's side, much to the surprise of everyone. How you been? You really just don't care about anything, do you, said Tamari. Alright, my bad, we'll, we'll talk later. Yeah. Yes, we will, said Gara. Running back to his side, Naruto hardens his face to be extremely serious as Tsunade sighs when Mifune then tells him to put their headpieces forward and finally begin the summit. With these words, their attendants disappear, appearing behind the veils representing their state, um not states, their nations in the stands, and they're just watching right now. All right, I'll start, Saigara. Ah, how the Gokage have changed and fallen, said Onoki. I guess your father didn't teach you manners. Hmm. As I was saying, I myself used to be a Chinjuriki, which is why I consider the Akatsuki a very dangerous entity. 
Onoki clicks his tongue, remarking how cheeky he is, with Mei asking him to stop interrupting. Continue, please. Thank you. Thank you. I have applied for this summit many times, and yet, only got a reply, not from any of you, but just the leaf. That is because no other nation can allow their pride to be hurt over losing a Jinjuriki, said Onoki. What are you, ancient? Your need to hold on to that pride is exactly why we will keep losing Jinjuriki, said Gara. That little stripling, said Onoki. As they continue a back and forth, some Kage intervene a bit. The Raikage um, obviously has been building up this anger over and over, right? We know how A is. And he explodes, breaking the table and forcing every attendant except Sasuke and Naruto to move instantly. With them now all being at a standstill, aiming for bloodlust, they're next. They want to kill right now at the Raikage, who was shielded by Darui and C. Please refrain from starting anything, said Mifune. How are we supposed to have a conversation like this? Man, all of them are tense. If he wanted any of the retainers dead, he wouldn't have needed to explode, says Sasuke. Mm, it's kind of fun, though. Granny, you need any help? <sighs> no, stand down. And call me Lord Fifth, damn it. As the other Kage begin to tell their people to retreat, Onoki asks, How can Konoha be so lax? Your attendants have no care. Oh, you keep your mouth out of my business, says Tsunade. If those two wanted it, it wouldn't matter what jutsu you use, it'd fail. That's quite the statement, said I. Go ahead and try your hand again if you want. You really lost to his father. Adding his son to the list wouldn't mean much, would it? What do you mean? You're the son of Minato Namikaze? This leaves all those present shocked as they actually didn't hear anything about this as while everyone in Konoha knew about it, no one else was supposed to know. And now the resemblance is quite uncanny that they look at it. They just can't ignore it anymore. I wonder how badly your dad kicked his ass, said a whispering Sasuke. He's glaring at me pretty bad, said Naruto. It must have been embarrassing. Oh, Granny, I'm gonna fix the place if you don't mind. As he begins to weave signs, Sonata says to do it, and they all get on guard, with the seal then spreading from the boy and spreading below their feet, covering the torn pavement and basically everything in the room. What are you. What's going on? asked C. Don't get all uppity, said Naruto. Jeez, I'm just fixing your mess. What am I witnessing? asked Onoki. What, what is this? I must be dreaming. What, what secret art is that? They watch as these seals glow with golden color, and the damage done literally reverts right before their eyes, leaving them in complete shock when the seals then shatter and turn to dust in the air. Oof, oh my bad, crap, it wore off, said Naruto. Is that, there's no way. Due to the use of his reversion release, Naruto lost grip on his transformation due to exposing his transplanted Renegon to all those present who were left in complete shock. Those eyes then return to normal, well, quote unquote normal, as Naruto says, Alright, you guys can get back to it now. Why do you always do something ridiculous? asked Kankuro. What? How will this summit continue? Will Obito still make his declaration? Find out in the next part of Naruto. It's been me and your boy. I hope you enjoyed. And peace. I'm gone. They'll tell you what to do in life instead of everything you know that you can get. Don't let them guide your life towards regret I'll fight for what I love with every breath My past is filled with things I won't forget I use them all to push me to my best